you might have something that looks like a, a four over an X plus a four all over a one over an X plus a four minus a one over X. Okay, so complex rational expression. This is your main fraction bar. You have a fraction in the top, fraction, two fractions actually in the bottom. All right, the method that we have used all semester to simplify this is to multiply through by that least common denominator. So let's put over here least common denominator method. All right, so I'm going to look at all of my denominators, x plus 4, x plus 4, and x, which means my least common denominator is x, x plus 4. So I'm going to multiply it by the top. I'm going to also multiply it by the bottom. All right, and again, I write it up high to remind myself that this is in the numerator. I don't want to put the over one there because it just clutters it up. But then when I do it, I'm going to use my finger method. All right, and I'm going to go, okay, I'm multiplying this whole thing times this. X plus four is in the bottom, X plus four is in the top. They're going to cross out. The only thing that's left over is going to be the four X, which means my fraction went away, which is what I want to happen. All right, on the bottom, I do have to distribute so I got to do both of those. All right, again, finger method, okay? This fraction, one over X plus four times this quantity. This X plus four is in the top. This X plus four is in the bottom. So those are going to be crossed out. The X times one is just X. So then I have an X here. My fraction, this fraction disappeared. That's what I want to happen. All right, then I'm going to write down a minus. All right, because that minus is right there. Now, when I distribute here, again, this X is on the bottom. This X is in the top because this is up high. So the X's are going to cross out. I'm going to have 1 times X plus 4. That X plus 4, if you notice, is in a set of parentheses. All right. It needs to stay in that set of parentheses because it is following a minus sign. So I have to keep it. It's there. Might as well keep it. All right. But the reason we keep it is because of that minus sign right there. Because what's that going to do? It's going to go through and change signs. Okay, so then I'm going to have a 4x all over an x. I'm going to change my signs. Minus x minus 4. Okay, all right, so what? x minus x in that bottom right there, x minus x is 0. All right, so then I'm going to be down to the 4x in the top and a negative 4 in the bottom. All right, 4 divided by negative 4 is just going to be a negative 1 with the x. So I'm, I wouldn't write negative one X. I would probably just write negative X, but they are equivalent answers. All right, so that is a straightforward complex rational expression. All right, and we have struggled with that all semester long. Okay, so I thought I would throw that one in there. Okay, now as another one, exact same type of problem. All right, but written in a different form. So if they give me an X to the negative one, plus an x to the negative 2, and then a y, all over a y to the negative 1, plus an x, y to the negative 2. This is the exact same thing as this. It's just in a different format. This, you're going to have to rewrite using your laws of exponents so that you create a complex rational expression that looks like this. So what I'm going to do with all of these negative exponents is I'm going to move them to the bottom and make them positive, make those exponents positive, and then I'll keep that number one, the one on the top. So doing just this term, that becomes a one over an x, putting the plus sign in. The x to the negative two will go to the bottom, become positive, but this one has a y left in the top x squared. This one over here, one stays in the top and I goes y to the positive one in the bottom. Put the plus sign down. This x is going to stay in the top. The y to the negative two goes to the bottom and becomes positive. So I have an x on top and a y squared on the bottom. So on this type of problem, and they put it on the final exam every year, you've got to be able to go from here to here. Okay. Now again, I'm going to take a look at these denominators. I'm going to come up with the least common denominator. It looks like an x squared and a y squared. All right, so x squared, y squared will be that least common denominator. x squared, y squared. All right, and again, picking that least common denominator. When I'm looking at variables with exponents, 
All right, this would be an x to the first, that'd be a y to the first. All right, since I'm looking for the least common denominator, I pick the highest exponent of each one of those variables. So looking at the x's, I'm gonna pick the x squared. Looking at the y's, I'm gonna pick that y squared. All right, again, we've got to distribute and distribute, and again, distribute and distribute. On this very next step, if I have done it correctly, everything as far as my fractions in the top and bottom are gonna fall out. So distributing here using that finger method, x squared on top, x on the bottom, which means one of the x's will go away in the top, and I'll have the y squared still, so an x y squared. Fraction is gone, the plus sign I'm gonna write down. Distribute in here, the x squared and the x squared goes away. I have a y squared and a y left over. That means I'm gonna have a y to the third. Down here, I've got one y in the bottom. I have two y's in the top. So one of them's gonna go away with the one on the bottom. That leaves me with the x squared y. Plus sign. All right, distributing in here, I've got a y squared in the bottom and a y squared in the top. So x squared times the x is going to give me an x to the third. Now, under normal circumstances, we would probably end up stopping right there. However, looking at this, all right, I can factor out something in the top. I can factor out something in the bottom. Okay, so again, without actually you know, doing another problem, we did rational expressions where we factored things out, crossed them out, and simplified them. So this skill in this problem also covers a whole entire another chapter that we did. All right, so looking at the top there, I can factor out a y squared. In this term, I'll have an x left over. In this term, I will have just a y left over. Looking down here, I can factor out an x squared. x squared out of this first term leaves me with a y. x squared out of this term leaves me with just an x. Now, even though that these two things are written backwards, x plus y, y plus x, we know that any two numbers added together are going to give me the same answer. So these two things are equivalent. I can't cross them out, which then is going to get me down to just a y squared over an x squared.